So before we talk about who really should not be using glutamine and probably should be stopping it almost immediately, and that might freak you out just a little bit, let's talk a little bit about the benefits of glutamine and some of the reasons that people use glutamine and some of the folks that could really do some good by using some glutamine. So the first thing we want to understand is that glutamine is an amino acid. And that's basically like a building block for the body, what the body uses to rebuild our tissues. And glutamine is available in our food supply. It's in what we eat. It's in proteins. When proteins are broken down into amino acids, glutamine is one of those amino acids that is very common in many, many foods. The problem is that a lot of people don't have the ability to break their food down correctly. And if you can't break proteins down into amino acids, then you may not be gaining enough glutamine from the food that you're eating. And these are some of the folks that really benefit from taking glutamine. So what a person really could do is if they're having any digestive symptoms at all, any burping or bloating or constipation or diarrhea or acid reflux or nausea or maybe food just kind of feels like it sits there like a rock in their stomach all day or, or acne or skin issues, all of those are really strong signs that you're not breaking down your food correctly. So if you're dealing with those, you really want to check for our, our video in the description below for understanding digestive troubles so you can correct those malfunctions. And then you can get glutamine right out of the food that you're eating already. But people use it a lot to accelerate healing. That's going to be a big deal. I'm going to help you understand why that is. We use it actually to slow down the stool. When someone's dealing with chronic diarrhea issues, you can use glutamine to really slow that down so then the body has time to assimilate the nutrients in the food. All the food isn't just screaming through the system with the diarrhea. And a lot of people use it to kind of speed up the, the healing of their gut lining. That's a very popular thing to use glutamine for. And we're going to talk about why that can be beneficial and problematic. And we're going to talk about some obvious reasons that someone might not want to use glutamine, but we're also going to talk about some issues that are kind of going on behind the curtains that can create some major issues for some people who are using glutamine. So you're not going to want to miss that. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So the first thing we want to understand is that glutamine has the ability to raise our blood pressure. So if somebody already has high blood pressure, they probably really don't want to be taking something that's going to raise that further. So glutamine might not be appropriate in that scenario. So if you have high blood pressure, but there's something going on where you could really benefit from using glutamine, then you can check our video on how to lower blood pressure naturally. And we'll put that in the description below so you can correct that issue and set yourself up to where you may qualify to use some glutamine. We also see that it will really magnify constipation. Just like we were saying that we use it with clients with chronic diarrhea to help slow down the stool. If somebody has constipation, they're going to magnify that greatly when they're using glutamine. And you're going to understand why in just a minute. And the big thing to understand is that glutamine is not magical. It's not like, oh, it's going to heal the body. You really want to understand what it's doing and why it's helping. And that's going to allow you to use it more appropriately. So we'll talk a little bit in a minute just about how to use it and dosing and timing. But when we're going to understand if we should use glutamine or not, we really need to understand what's going on with our circadian rhythm. So let's dig into that for just a second. And when I say circadian rhythm, I'm not talking about is a person sleeping well? Oh, I'm sleeping great. My circadian rhythm is really rocking the house. It's about a lot more than just is a person sleeping or not. So it was Dr. Emmanuel Ravisi who first helped us understand that the body has a natural circadian rhythm at the cellular level. And during the day, the body should be in what's called a catabolic state, where the body is very good at creating energy, so it keeps us going all day, and it's very good at breaking tissues down so that those tissues can be rebuilt and renewed. And then at night, the body should move into a more anabolic state. And this is where the body is very good at resting and sleeping and also rebuilding and repairing things. So you can see that both of these states are appropriate. There's benefits for the body for either state. The problem is, for a wide variety of reasons, some people can get stuck too far into one of these states or they'll get stuck into one of these states far too often. So it takes actually a lot of resources to move from one state to the other. And the body really wants to do that because it wants to optimize how it's going to function during that time. So it moves into this catabolic state 
So it can optimize its ability to create energy and kind of keep us going all day. It optimizes the ability to break down tissues so they can be rebuilt. And then it moves into this state at night to optimize those nighttime functions. But when a person gets stuck in one of these states, it can create a wide variety of health issues. So if somebody's stuck in this catabolic state most of the time, we see things like insomnia because at the cellular level, they're kind of awake. The body's like, go, go, go. So they have a hard time sleeping. Now, what's important to understand is that there are other causes to things like insomnia and all of these things that we're going to talk about. So if you're dealing with some of these things and you want to understand them a little bit better, we'll put links to videos below in the description where we talk about things like anxiety and loose stools and constipation because you might want to look to see if you're dealing with other underlying causes of those issues as well. But if somebody's dealing with insomnia because they're stuck in this catabolic state, then using glutamine could help push them into this anabolic state. Because what we need to understand about glutamine is it's one of the most pro-anabolic amino acids. So it can help push a person into that anabolic state. So we see a lot of loose stools and someone's overly catabolic. We see insulin resistance. And what we really see is maybe hey, somebody's really breaking down. So what that means is that when they're stuck in this breakdown state, they're not moving into this anabolic state where the body rebuilds and repairs tissues. So they might be having a lot of injuries. Maybe an injury is taking a long time to heal or they're just kind of feeling broken down. And this is going on because they're not moving into this nighttime state where they can rebuild and repair. So that's a scenario where glutamine could really be beneficial. Now here's a really big problem. What if somebody's already dealing with constipation? and they're gonna start taking glutamine. That glutamine is gonna push you more into that anabolic state. And in the anabolic state, the body tends to send more of its water to the kidneys and less to the bowels. So then the stool gets hard and dry and difficult to move. So that's one of the very common causes for constipation. So if somebody's dealing with that, they're gonna start making more glutamine and they're not gonna poop until Easter. So Anxiety is also very common to see in this anabolic state because in that state, the body likes to create energy through fermentation. And a byproduct of creating energy through fermentation is lactic acid. So when lactic acid levels go too high, that can create anxiety and even panic attacks. So a person is already dealing with anxiety and panic attacks, they're gonna take some glutamine, they could really magnify that situation. Same with tachycardia issues. These are a result of being overly anabolic. And here's a scary one. We see hard tumors in this overly anabolic state. So in the book about Emmanuel Ravisi, The Doctor Who Cures Cancer, he talks a lot about he saw those hard tumor issues in this more anabolic state. So I'm not saying that an anabolic state is what causes hard tumors like breast cancer and such, but we see a lot in our practice that that kind of lines up and that correlates most of the time. And he found that when he was able to improve that imbalance, that he was able to correct those situations. So if a person is leaning towards this and they start taking glutamine and push them further into this anabolic state, they can really be magnifying some significant problems. So when we go back and we look at these benefits, that someone can get from using glutamine, you know, we're using them as a building block and that's important. The body needs those building blocks, but the body also needs to be able to move into that anabolic state to really utilize those building blocks. And that's why glutamine can be so beneficial for things like after surgery, you know, for a faster recovery or some type of injury or someone trying to heal their gut. The problem is don't view glutamine like it's going to be a magic healing thing for your gut lining. That's not what it is. It's just helping the body move into the state where the body likes to rebuild and repair. It's also giving the body a little bit of tools it can use as building blocks to do that rebuilding and repairing. But if you haven't corrected the problem that's creating the damage in the first place, it's not gonna be some magic thing that's just gonna come down like a wizard and fix everything so that you can go to your square dance on Friday. You really gotta fix the problems that might be creating those troubles and then glutamine can be beneficial. So when we look at how to use glutamine, we really wanna take it away from food because glutamine will compete with protein for absorption. So we really wanna let it go right into the system. So taking glutamine on an empty stomach is the way to go. And you also, when you're looking at the timing and the dose, since glutamine is pro-anabolic, it's gonna push a person more anabolic, we wanna take it later in the day when the body should be more anabolic. So maybe before dinner, while there's an empty stomach going on, and then maybe before bed. Those are two times 
when the stomach may be empty enough to use some glutamine and push you in a more anabolic state. And depending on how far you're already there or how much help you need could really dictate the dose. I'm not going to give you a dose, but people use anything from, you know, a thousand milligrams to 5,000 milligrams. So it can really depend on a lot of factors. How's your blood pressure looking? Is taking a higher dose going to raise your blood pressure too high? There's a lot of things to look at. But what you really want to figure out first is are you leaning too far on one of these sides? So what I want you to do right now to figure out is it really going to benefit me? Am I leaning too far on this catabolic side? Or am I leaning too anabolic and maybe I can use a small amount or maybe I need to correct that imbalance before I can really use any glutamine? Just jump over right now and check out our video on how to know if your circadian rhythm is off so you can look at these simple tests that you can do at home to figure out if you're already leaning too far in one direction and understand if glutamine will really be beneficial or not. I can't wait to hear about your results.